Hello there. Good evening, indeed, and many thanks for joining us at this Thursday evening on Rwanda Television News. We hope you had yourselves a productive day. And now this is what makes our top stories tonight. The government of Rwanda has assured ed educational institutions that it will investigate whether funds contributed towards the school feeding program can be tax exempted. 400 students who are concluded tourism studies from Cornell University say that the courses they learned from this world as a leading university in providing tourism courses will help them in their careers. A very good evening to you and welcome to Rwanda Television News tonight. My name is Sam Kalisa and as we kick it off from local matters, the government of Rwanda has assured educational institutions that it will investigate whether funds contributed towards the school feeding program can be tax exempted. Nuria Tagasaro starts off tonight with this report. The government of Rwanda introduced the school feeding program where students in primary and secondary schools should give a lunch during the day as a part of efforts to improve education. The government gives its contribution to each student, but parents also must contribute. The head of the school says that nowadays food prices have increased, hence the government's contribution to the program is insufficient as the fund is subject to taxation. Another issue is that those who win school feeding tenders have increased their bid offers. In order for the children to have food, government tenders are given entrepreneurs so that the children will have food. But the prices are set differently because they also need to make a profit. For example, you can go and buy a kilo of beans for 2000 but today it is at 1500 so when that money is given, it does not do what was intended for because of the tax. Some of the school principals raised this question to Prime Minister Dr. Eduard Njirene during the Teacher's Day celebration. You find that the income has increased, the rice has reached to 40,000, and then you find that 21% of the children do not get food that is allocated as it should be. And we say that there is no way that the institutions will work and the taxes will be deducted from that food. Prime Minister Dr. Eduard Njirene replied that this issue will be discussed. The purpose of school feeding is for children to eat, eat well, and be satisfied. We wouldn't permit the funding we provided to fall short of what we would accept. I can promise you that the problem will be solved, and I should add that the government has agreed to allow you to buy close to your work location rather than in Kigali. Currently, you are allowed to buy close to your, to your schools, but there are other factors that will help with school feeding, so we will provide a solution before the start of the first semester of school. Prime Minister Dr. Edward Njirene once again warns school leaders who do not follow the Ministry of Education's instructions on school fees set for all schools. Nuria Tagasaro, RTV News. The participants of the Conference for Tax and Customs Institutions of the East and Southern African countries say that when used effectively, technology can help to provide better services and reduce tax evasion. Adam Squizeda has this report. Infrastructure is one of the potential barriers to the use of technology by customs, as it was stated during this conference. The challenges that we face back home normally are power outages. We do have some remote border posts which, which need to be automated and be online. But because of electricity challenges, because of internet connectivities, at times we, they, we are not connected to them. Um, the world is evolving. We don't need to go manual when everyone else is talking about e-commerce, global village. It means data exchange, it means information exchange, it means if I need anything from Rwanda Customs, it's just a click of the button, I got it. But if you are not automated, what it essentially means is I have to write a letter, post it, send it, wait for another two, three weeks to come back. 
the attendees of this conference are examining how technology may aid in the growth of, of the international trade and cooperation. According to Kanini Gondo Jalui, Deputy Commissioner General of the Rwanda Revenue Authority, Rwanda has benefited from technology in delivering successful registration, declaration, and collection of taxes and customs. It allows all stakeholders involved in the clearing of goods that are entering into the country. Uh, it allows them to be on the same platform, to provide information on the same platform, and thus to reduce the processing time uh, before uh, goods are released from the customs. Uh, on top of that, it adds another layer for controlling the security of, uh, or, or the veracity in the declarations. So it, it, it allows for transparency, it allows for traceability of every transaction that has happened in the customs department. That would be the first uh, system. The major system in the customs department, in our customs services, is what we call our electronic cargo tracking system, which allows us, not only in Rwanda, but even in uh, neighboring countries in the region, uh, more specifically in Kenya, in Uganda. Now we are working with uh, Tanzania to, ha to have it working up. We have a regional electronic cargo tracking system that allows us to know when a certain cargo has reached a point of entry in the single customs territory of East Africa. We can tell when the truck has arrived, who's the driver on the truck, what phone they have, and that system allows us to follow them on a map. Geographically, we have geofence all the routes that they take. We can see how they are moving and we can estimate the time of arrival of that cargo on our borders. Larry Lisa, Director General of the World Customs Organization for Eastern and Southern Africa, noted that it is very beneficial for trade between countries when technology is used for customs. We hope to get a lot of benefits, definitely revenue, because digitalization enables seamless collection of revenue. Issues to do with advanced rulings and advanced passenger information and information on goods and services. So we are able to clear our goods more electronically with ease. We are able to reduce on physical inspection of goods, such as um, a verification, by increasing more of our techniques and knowledge in scanner but the aim now is to as much as possible smoothen and quicken the flow of trade and uh, of goods and services without hampering security and we love a country like Rwanda because you are one of the most successful transformational digitalization stories not just in East and Southern Africa but in Africa at large because of the dig digitalization measures that RRA and the government of Rwanda put it increased your cost it lowered the cost of doing business cost of registration starting business in Rwanda and increased the capacity of Rwanda, improving its ease of trade, of, of doing business. Rwanda Revenue Authority adds that through advancing technology, it will be possible to declare items before they reach to the borders of Rwanda. This high-level customs digitalization forum brought together the tax and customs institutions of the countries of Eastern and Southern Africa. This is a today conference with more than 20 countries represented. Adams Cruzera, RTV News. Thank you, Adams. Nearly 400 students uh, who concluded a tourism studies from Cornell University say that the courses they learned from this world leading university in providing tourism courses will help them in their careers. The graduates say that Cornell University has provided them with skills that will help them in their current jobs. This is a very huge achievement in my career uh, as a person who is working in the industry. But also it's a vote of confidence to what we, is happening to our tourism and hospitality industry. Uh, for a long time we didn't really have uh, global universities like this. So having really a Cornell University, uh, you know, partnering with the MasterCard Foundation through Hunger Hazards and the government of Rwanda uh, to empower and equip us, uh, to make us better. Uh, there's nothing better than really that. We're very proud of that. The Director General of the Rwanda Chamber of Tourism at the Private Sector Federation, Frank Mujisha, says that the private sector needs skilled workers. It should be a 
privilege uh, to all actors, including us, Chamber of Tourism. Uh, the Chamber of Tourism, of course, has uh, hotels under us. Uh, we have uh, two operators, we have safari guides, and all of those have uh, been uh, trained with uh, Vatel, marketing, uh, service excellence, delivery. And here you're talking about improved service delivery, of course, but also, uh, for example, uh, uh, employees who have been into the marketing courses, uh, we're seeing them more representing us uh, to various uh, uh, marketing uh, destinations to sell more Rwanda, to market Rwanda, to contribute to visiting Rwanda, uh, which we represent in the private sector. Ariela Kajiruka, the head of tourism and conservation department at the Rwanda Development Board, RDB, reiterated that students from Cornell International University are expected to add spark to the development of tourism in Rwanda. As you know, our positioning as a country is to offer uh, high-end uh, uh, tourism, but high-end goes with high-quality products, high-quality high uh, experiences, and uh, these cannot be possible without um, highly skilled uh, force in the industry. Uh, this milestone is uh, uh, definitely... Uh, um, an added value to continuing uh, to continue to build our industry in the right uh, in the right way, and additionally, um, the, the the industry will benefit from specialized skills uh, from these uh, graduate uh, graduates that uh, have acquired uh, the necessary um, uh, knowledge and skills that they will be applying in their daily jobs and uh, also be able to create jobs uh, themselves. Rurangwa David, country program head at Mastercard Foundation, noted that the organization aims to help 300,000 young people get jobs and create them by 2030. Hence, developing the tourism sector is in this line. In line with the government vision to really promote the tourism and hospitality industry, we really see, saw this opportunity. And, and, and um, we, we, we saw this opportunity and, and the, just the, the sheer size of the, the youth population in Rwanda and, and the, the opportunity tapping into all these opportunities that are coming, you know, the, the construction of the, the Bujesera airport, the, the positioning of the country as um, uh, mice, you know, you, you know, meeting its incentives, conferences and, uh, and events. Does that vision that the government had it was really offering us an opportunity and the fact that you know Rwandans are hospitable yeah these students who studied online have graduated in the fields of hotel management tourism restaurant management accountants and more on a Thursday during the Internet Governance Forum, various players in the, in the technology sector and other key partners pointed out that resilient internet is key in ensuring a sustainable internet ecosystem for economic and social development. Olive Nhete has this report. ...that brought together various stakeholders in the technology sector, including the government, the private sector, civil society, the technical and others. Discussions were iterated on the progress made in the internet ecosystem in Rwanda, but also iterated on the security, stability and development of the internet and some of the challenges that still hinders this sector and how they can be addressed. Some of the participants of this forum mentioned some of the challenges faced in the usage of internet. Yeah, in our daily work, uh, the, the main challenge we are, we are facing is our uh, the speed of the internet. The other challenge uh, is uh, when it comes to like to digital, like changing people into digital learners, digital, uh, the digital skills is very hard for people to understand our product. The chief executive officer of the Rwanda Internet Community and Technology Alliance, Grace Ingawiri, notes that the government of Rwanda has established various initiatives to ensure connectivity to all people. So what we are trying to do is to work with different umbrellas, in, including international agencies, to see how do we connect, how does it, how 
uh, to bring the internet closer to those who are unconnected. And those who are unconnected are mainly in the rural areas. Rwanda is doing a mobilization through different initiatives that are being run by the Ministry of ICT, different partners in Rwanda, ISPs and telcos, to take that internet to that person who is in the rural area. Around 2.9 billion people worldwide don't have access to internet. The Minister of ICT and Innovation, Paula Ngabire, pointed out that it is essential to build resilience of the internet to ensure open access to everyone. I think one thing to also underscore, which is one of the thematic areas, is how do we avoid internet fragmentation, and that's another thematic area. How do we ensure open access uh, to the internet, um, enabling safety, security and accountability, but also how do we leverage the different uh, emerging technologies, AI, robotics, Internet of Things. And all of these are the core of making sure that we can afford to deliver meaningful access and secure access to the Internet. This conference is being held in Rwanda for the 10th time. It is also reviewing what Rwanda will showcase in the annual Global Internet Governance Forum expected to be held in Ethiopia on the 28th of November 2022. Olive Nete, RTV News. Thank you, Olive, for the report. And as we move ahead, a sum of 20 billion Rwandan francs is the Rwanda government's five-year subsidy for the citizens willing to buy modern stoves as the goal is to have 500,000 homes quit using charcoal and wood for uh, cooking by 2024. Prince Manzi brings us this report. This is Lilian Dushime, who appreciates how the modern cooker saves both time and resources. This would weigh a kilogram and can cook two kilograms of beans in only two hours. These are the words we use while those using normal stoves use about 10 kilograms. And even if the words might be scarce, I can use this box to cook a litre and a half of tea in only 10 minutes. Schools and tea factories are among the major consumers of wood for cooking. The finance manager, the Gatrio Technical Secondary School, Teogen Dufatanya Nayo, reiterates that ever since they started using modern stoves, they saved the funds a large sum used to buy woods and charcoals. Before we started using these stoves, we used to spend 3 million and 400,000 a year, but now we are spending a million and 800,000. So it is obvious that these stoves are good. Rwanda has a goal of reducing the use of wood and charcoal from 80% in 2017 to 42% by 2024 and 20% by 2030. For this goal to be achieved, the government of Rwanda through the Development Bank of Rwanda set a subsidy worth 20 billion Rwanda francs for those willing to buy modern stoves, including those using gas and electricity. This is a five years initiative from 2021 to 2025, targeting 500,000 homes. The coordinator of the Clean Cooking Project preserve based financing in the development bank of Rwanda, Firbel Dusenge, elaborates that this subsidy on these modern stoves differs according to the social economic classes, whereby the first class, it will be 90% of the price of the cooker, the second class will be 70%, and the third class will be 45% of the price of any stove they want. Until today, we are working in different districts through private business entities. We have provided 6,000 stores in different districts across Rwanda, and we are continuing because now we have two companies that have signed the contract with the Development Bank of Rwanda to start providing cookers, and we will give the subsidy to them afterwards. Sabe Murerehe is one of the private entrepreneurs who started distributing modern stoves named Umurabyo to the willing citizens in the first and second socioeconomic classes. This cooker named Umurabyo reduces five to six times the number of woods normally used. A special thing is it does not produce a lot of smoke and you can place it wherever not necessary in the kitchen. Cook well, fast and using few woods. There are 23 types of standardized cookers. The Director General of the Rwanda Standards Board elaborates on the criteria for standard certifying. There are smokes are found by the regulations of standardization and others that don't. 
We also consider what consists of the cooker, for instance, the iron. Is it on standard? The clay. Is it on standard? We also consider the lighting particles. 600,000 homes have already accessed the modern cookers. Big projects like Green Jichumbi and Green Amayaga are expected to provide cookers to 23,000 homes and 60,000 homes, respectively. The manager for clean cooking and biogas use at Energy Development Corporation states that this subsidy is going to increase the number of subscribers of the modern cookers. We have hope because it did not happen accidentally. It happened because the subsidy was imposed after finding out that people are burdened by paying the price of the cookers as a way of showing them that the government values their step. This will also help in campaigning and lead into having more citizens buying these stoves after knowing the importance of these stoves. About a billion people in Africa have no proper way of cooking. Four million people on this continent died due to complications related to smokes released from woods and charcoals. Prince Manzi, All TV News. Members of the Forum of Heads of Human Rights are commissions in the French-speaking uh, countries in Africa who were in Rwanda for a two-day summit decided to solve uh, human rights issues in their respective countries, especially those that are specific to each country. Prince Manzi continues. Each of the five countries who participated in this summit decided to solve major human rights-related problems. The Human Rights Commission in Rwanda was given responsibilities of following up land-related problems as they are mostly the issues of concern to most of Rwandans nowadays, as explained by the president of this commission, Mukasi Ne Marie Claire. <laughs> Each country took a decision and it will be implemented. According to the steps that we also demonstrated, for us in Rwanda, we found that the human right to deal with is land and related properties. We will make research and see the main issues in it because most of the complaints we receive are land-based. Before returning in their respective countries, these officials visited the Chigadi Genocide Memorial. The president of the Ivory Coast Human Rights Commission and the president of the Forum of Heads of the Human Rights Commissions in the French-speaking African countries, Namizata Sangari, states that it is in the commission's mandate to fight against genocide. On dit plus jamais ça. Never again. This is what I have to say today. It is our mandate to fight against genocide. Strive for peace, security, that is our mandate as human rights commissions. Du rôle d'une institution en charge des questions des droits de l'homme. Members of this forum initiated the system of following up the implementation of all measures taken in this summit. Prince Manzi, our TV News. And on behalf of the entire news production, as well as the technical team that made uh, this bulletin uh, happen, many thanks for being with us. My name is Sam Kalisa, and up until next time, we wish you safe. Goodbye. <laughs>